Thank you, Quick Shot and crew. And what an incredible series. Result going one way or the other, I don't think it would have mattered. That was just fantastic. League of Legends, SKT pulling it out in the end to assert their dominance. Uh, you know, over the world, our first qualifier into the finals here. I mean, just spectacular play. That's one of the best, the board. best of fives I've ever seen, to be honest. Going down to the wire, every team showcasing all they have. But I gotta say, I'm a little hurt at the casters taking a stab at me. Well, I can't defend myself. <laughs> about switching the prediction. I mean, my mind was telling me no, but you know how the body says, and they were saying yes. The body says yes. I mean, again, we have to, I have to, let's look at SKT first just because we asked how are they going to make the adjustments to come back and, and finish off that series in Game 5, the composure, the veterans, Bangi, one of those big veterans, steps up in the fifth game and really drives it home. Yeah, and we questioned how they were going to do it. They were used to being subbed out. We questioned the mental fortitude. These were all things that we threw at them. And wow, props to those guys for really nailing the last game and coming out absolutely huge. I think their coaching staff behind Koma needs a huge shout out for this. Faker, the heart and soul of the team, really needs to be lifted up because these guys came out absolutely massive. Yeah, and then they started getting on top of the game immediately with that Nunu. Bengi's Nunu was actually really good this series. He wasn't that great uh, when we saw him before, but he's always had a really stellar Nunu. So this time we saw him before is just a little bit of a hiccup. And what he did this game it cannot be an overstated because what he did is he made Fnatic play his game. He made Fnatic have to answer where he is and he even made Rainover, the guy who's been buying Yellow Trinket upgraded, buy a Sight Stone before he upgraded his Cinder Hulk. So they got Rainover out of the lanes. Rainover's not affecting the side lanes and he's just trying to deal with this Nunu and then they're pulling people from the lane to deal with him and that was huge. Before we get into the semantics of yep. the game, I do want to hop over to the other side and recognize Fnatic for their play as well. This team led by Yellow Star, a bunch of rookies putting up a tremendous fight. We saw the huddle of them there at the end on the stage. They have, you know, they have nothing to do but be proud about the effort that they put up on the stage today. I think that was a really heartwarming series and also the scenes in the end just showcased how Fnatic is looking towards this game. I think that was an incredible experience. They will come home and say, we showed what we can do. They gave SKT a run for their money. And I think, as we stated before, if there was somebody who could show SKT the ropes, that was Fnatic. And I'm really looking forward how. And with that, for the inside story on that series, we're going to send it over to Shox, who's with SKT's monster in the mid lane, Faker. Thank you very much, Dash. <laughs> Well, first up, congratulations, Faker. Uh, what a dominating performance in that last game, but it was a tight series after all. Were you surprised at all and how surprised that what a good fight Fnatic was able to put up versus your team? Faker's win is a great win. The Fnatic team is a great win and the SK team is a great win. Did you think of this result? 어 일단 제가 해외 경기를 좀 많이 챙겨보는데 어, 그때는 좀 유럽 리그에서 프나틱이 그렇게 잘한 줄, 잘하는 줄 몰랐는데 이번에 좀 저희가 경기하면서 많이 놀랐고 어제 경기 이, 어제 경기도 그렇고 좀 되게 생각보다 많이 잘하고 어 그거는 좀 예상은 많이 하긴 했어요 어제 경기로 인해서. Um, they were a lot better than I expected. I usually watch a lot of like EOLCS games. At that time, I didn't think Fnatic was this good, but starting from yesterday, um, yeah, I got to see that they're a really good team. And let's focus on that mid lane especially. Like You had some very good plays, but Febevin, in his, in his very first international tournament, what did you think of the matchup? Because he had some good moves. Fnatic mid laner Febevin is the first Korean team in this year. Can you give some advice to that player? 어 오늘 경기를 하면서 일단 페비벤 순서가 좀 라인전에서는 그렇게 강한 선수가 아닌데 좀 한타 하나 일단 움직임이 좀 굉장히 뛰어난 선수라는 걸 느꼈고 그걸로 인해서 좀 페비벤 선수가 많이 그 어, 잠재력이 있다고 생각해요. Uh, I think he's a player with a very high potential. Um, his laning skills wasn't the best, but his team fights and his like movements and other like skill shots were really high class. All right. Well, he will be very happy to hear that. Stepping away from this match, Faker, you're the 2013 world champion. You guys won with SKT All Stars last year in Paris. How far away are you with this iteration of SKT from being the best in the world again? 
그 페이커 선수는 이제 2013년에 세계 그 대회를 우승하였고 작년에는 올스타전을 우승했는데요. 그럼 이 현재 지금 팀은 다시 한번 왕자에 오르기, 오르기까지 얼마나 남은 것 같나요? 어 일단 저희가 지금 2년 동안 좀 제가 2년 동안 좀 힘들었는데 어 그렇기 때 그, 근데 이번에는 좀 많은 좋은 기회를 잡은 것 같고 또 이제 이번에 MSI에서 우승한다면 다음 롤드컵까지 좀 쉽게 갈수 있을 것 같아서 이번 뭐 하루 정도 내만 이기면 될것 같아서 네 하루 남은 것 같네요. Uh, I had a very hard time for the past year or so, but this year I think we had a really, really we had a lot of good opportunities, and I think we're only one step away to win this MSI. And once you get this, you have a good chance at playing at Worlds. So one step away. One step away. That is, if you um, win the final tomorrow. So last question, of course, has to be: Who would you prefer playing, EDG or AHQ? I know there's someone that are in EDG who you know very well. 그럼 이제 내일 결승전에 이겨야만 그한 발짝이 더 다가설 텐데요. 그럼 내일 결승전 때 만날 상대로 EDG랑 HQ 중에 좀 누굴 더 원하시나요? 어 일단 누가 올라오든 상관은 없는데 어 제가 여기 국제 대회 오기 전만 해도 좀 HQ가 EDG한테 좀 크게 패할 거라고 생각했었는데 이번에 국제 대회에서 활약하는 모습을 보고 어 그쪽도 저희처럼 좀어그 3대 2까지 갈수 있을 거라고 생각해요. 그, 그렇지만 저는 EDG가 좀더 높을 좀더 올라올 확률이 높다고 생각해요. Uh, first of all, I don't really care who comes up, but uh, before I came here, I didn't really think HQ would come up this high. But looking at their performance here at MSI, I was really surprised, and I do think they have a chance to win. But For now, let's say EDG has higher chance. <laughs> For now, let's say EDG. Thank you very much. You guys are in the final. Thank you very much, Faker. And congratulations. And with that, back over to you, Dash. Thank you, Shox. A lot of support in that stadium for Faker. We heard him mention, you know, they may not have given Fnatic enough credit for how well they would come out and play. And so, Sheepy, I want to come back to you with what SKT might take away from this series going into the finals tomorrow. Yeah, this is actually what I wanted to finish from last time. I think that SKT actually saw that there's a lot of competition out there, that they are not the undisputed champions, and that there can be cracks and there can be exploits in their game style. So I think that they will rewatch this and especially the aggressiveness, the TP and the flanks from Fnatic is something they can take something from away. I liked how they changed their strategy towards the last game. The key player for Fnatic was Rainover with Yellow Star. And by taking the Alice Star, tower diving becomes a lot tougher because he's a difficult champion to dive, especially post level six. And the thing that Nunu brings to the table is that he's a champion that when he's in the game, he has a really easy time isolating the other jungler and removing them from making plays. So he's almost like a like a sacrificial lamb and gets both junglers out of the out of the equation. So the team has to play without a jungler, creating any favorable 1v1 matchups in any lane, swing even further, and that's exactly what happened. And I want to hit on that even further because they took it one step beyond that, picking an Urgot Alistar lane meant that Yellowstar had to stay home. You saw on the blue buff invade, I was sitting there saying, Yellowstar, you have to go help your jungler, but they are so concerned about keeping Steel back in the series because that's when they were winning games that Yellowstar was caught between the biggest rock and a hard place decision I have ever seen. He was chugging potions, trying to force issues, but I think he made a little bit of a misplay because they got Rain over so far behind and continued to bully him that the Nunu in the end was just an unstoppable force. I have to say what's been really interesting for me for this entire tournament but also this series in particular is to watch the pacing of the game because we've seen these aggressive play styles we've seen SKT fight that off trying to stay as composed as they can but also then watch them as you mentioned crumbs flip it around and put the pressure back on other teams yeah I really like tempo just all throughout this tournament whoever gets those first few dragons whoever gets those turret dives going for themselves just start to snowball with those early game mid game spikes and cheap items too I really like how it's been played out through the entire tournament 
Now, yeah. finally, there was one man that came up big, and this is the uh, in this best of against Fnatic. And after leading the charge in this set and coming up big where it counts, we have to recognize Faker as our player of the series. He was 33% of his team's damage over this series. Yeah, how could he not be player of the series? Even when they were losing, he was making stellar performances and plays. In that last game, he exposed Febivin's lane phase and just put him 100 CS down almost by his own devices solely. He was able to zone him off with Cassiopeia, and Febivin looked scared in this series for the first time and was able to just open up the map from the mid lane alongside the help of Benki. Yeah, and let's just bring it back to game one. His Ezreal got the whole series kicked off. That was the most impressive mid game Ezreal play I have ever seen. He out damaged the mid laner and the AD carry from the other team single handedly, and his mechanics are just so freaking good. I'm, I think often there's a sad faker, faker, playmaker, but I think <laughs> he showed once again that he is the one that can really carry the game and the team, and I think especially his Azir play impressed me a lot. And it seems only right, Spawn, as you were saying, that if you're going to put all your money on one guy to close out the series, it would be Faker, that star mid laner for SKT. Now we're going to patch up the rift while Edward Gaming and AHQ Esports Club load in for our second best of five semifinal. Here you can see Westor getting warmed up in AHQ's locker room. Uh, he's got a big game ahead of him, and Edward Gaming's pawn is looking cool and collected. Now keep it right here. The 2015 Midseason Invitational continues in just three and a half. Last game. Last game. No, it's first game. What first are you game. saying? <laughs> it's first game, yeah? First game, guys. Of course it's first game. He's zero versus zero. You Here comes Eddie Carey. That's a flash forward. There's no acid hunter yet. Somebody heal from Bang. The Ice Blast gets first blood. Hooney's thrown down the equalizer. Bingy's channeling the absolute zero. We do see the position reverser swapping into the pit. Now Baron has been peeled away. Now Feverfin goes forward. There's no Mega Nar available. That's a flash backwards. Fnatic may be able to win a team fight. Not without rain over though. Faker, explosive cast backwards. Petrifying gaze down. Double kill for Bang. Triple kill for Bang. Quadra kill for Bang. SK Telecom T1 will move on to the MSI Finals.